Hey Shay fam, welcome to the season three finale of SCD Interviews, where Christian creatives communicate. I am your host, Leona Howard, and I am very excited for this episode today. We have a powerful woman of God who can literally change and upgrade, come on, um, <laughs> your business and your brand, okay? So get ready to have some notes and pens in hand during this episode. But before we get into the finale, I have a few church announcements. Our end of the year party is coming up on December 5th, you guys. And not only is it coming up, not only do I need you guys to RSVP, but drum roll, our end of the year party is also sponsored by the one and only Noble Restaurant. So special thank you to our sponsor. We got some awesome Italian food and pizza for you guys. So make sure you guys RSVP so we know how much food to get for everyone and let's have a good time. We got some games, we got some prizes, and of course we gonna be dancing, okay? So I will see you guys on December 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. Click the link below to RSVP and I'll see you guys there. We also have merchandise. This is a great way to support this community and it's also a great way to represent Christ in style. We have a whole Christian apparel line and Shea Culture Dance merch line. So click that link because um, it is a great way to support this dance ministry and be a part of this community in a really cool way. So thank you so much for buying merchandise all year, you guys. It goes such a long way. I really appreciate it. Last but not least, we are also going on tour. Yes, you heard that right. In 2023, we are going on tour and we are coming to a city near you. We are going to be working with different dance studios, groups, and crews um, who are interested in having a Shea Culture Dance Workshop for their community. So if you would like us to come to your city, go ahead and email shakeculturedance at gmail.com and let's get that date locked in and so we can grow this community and let's take it national, let's take it international. So we are open. So if you have a dance team or crew who's interested in having a Shea Culture Dance Workshop that is catered to your group of dancers, go ahead and hit us up via email. Okay, you guys, let's get into the season three finale of SCD Interviews. Hello, SCD, Shake fam, what is up? Welcome to SCD Interviews season three, where Christian creatives communicate. I am your host, Leona Howard, and today we have Miss Cookie Robinson in the house. So let's welcome her. Let's welcome, let's welcome. How are you doing, girl? I am doing amazing. I'm so, so happy to be here and share this platform with you. I think this is amazing what you're doing. So I'm just ecstatic to uh, to be here with you. Yay, thank you, thank you. So we're gonna have some fun in the interview. We're switching it up. This is the season three finale. So we had to put a little sprinkle of sauce in there today. So I have a little bit of a surprise for the interviewer today, but let's go ahead and welcome Miss Cookie Robinson. She is a Buffalo, New York native. And she comes from a music and ministry upbringing. By 2017, the tools and skills gleaned over the years, and that went into her establishing Cookie Truth Media Group, or otherwise known as CTMG, as digital marketing became a focus, with tides and trends changing the landscape of brand presence online. As brand strategist and, you heard it right, CEO, Cookie has grown CTMG to become a resource center for digital growth, learning, and direction as it relates to brand development. CTMG helps busy burnout entrepreneurs by providing a team and resources as they grow their brand and increase their revenue to scale. Honey, she is a life coach. She is a speaker and she is a CEO. Once again, let's welcome Miss Cookie Robinson. I am so excited to have you today and get into it. Um, a big reason why we have this series is to show people that, yes, you're a Christian creative if you're an entrepreneur. I think sometimes people say, oh, I'm just a business owner, but there's a creative aspect to every business. You're creating something from the ground up, and in your case, you're in the digital space. So I really wanted to talk about your creative process, different product, maybe it's the same process, we'll see. So hopefully she inspires um, you guys today who are in the tech field or aspiring to get there, um, aspiring digital marketers, or people who just might need her service. 
So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's do it. <laughs> so would you say um, you always knew that you were going to be an entrepreneur? Ooh, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yes, I can unequivocally say yes to that. I, I have very early memories um, being a little kid in the car, looking at vacant buildings and imagining what could be done with it. Like, oh, if I had that building, I would do this. Or what if I was to, you know, be able to buy that building? What could I do with it? It was just something that nobody really taught me to do. Not that I can remember. But I definitely have those early, early memories of, of riding around in the backseat of my parents' car. And I'm imagining a world where I'm buying buildings and I'm, I'm establishing something, right? Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> I used to make, I don't know what people call them now, but we used to call them boondoggles where you like take the, uh, the plastic mm -hmm. uh, string type stuff. Yeah. And like, yeah, so we called them boondoggles back home in Buffalo. So I was making those, selling them. Uh, <laughs> me and one of my friends at church, we would make them in different colors and sell them to people. Wow. Yeah, it started early. <laughs> wow, okay. I love that you said it started as a child and you leaned into that. Did your parents help you lean into that or did you just naturally do that? To an extent, they did. Neither one of my parents are, are entrepreneurs, okay. so they really didn't lean in in the way to where they could like help guide me in that way. But they've always been super supportive of whatever it is that I felt like I wanted to do. They just always made room for me to have that creative freedom. And I'm so grateful for that because I don't know who I would be without that support system, you know. Yeah. So I'm very, very appreciative mm -hmm. and thankful for, you know, parents that definitely support the vision and that's never wavered my entire life. Like they've definitely had their moments where they bucked up like, okay, are you sure about this? Because this is getting a little out of hand, ma'am, like calm down. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but there would always be something that I was able to accomplish to prove like, no, I'm on the right path or this is where I'm supposed to be and it, and it worked out. But yeah. That's awesome. I like that. So I like that you always followed it. I like that you always leaned into it and you had space to do so. That is so important. And it was very field. important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what was the first service that you offered at CTMG? Was it supposed to be in digital marketing? No. Okay. No. So, so originally, so the, the first service that we offered was artist management. So like music artist management. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is so funny because whenever people learn this about me, they're like, what? Like, it's so, it seems so random, I guess, is the thing. But I come from, like, a very musical, artsy city. Buffalo is, you know, well known for food and the arts and things mm -hmm. like that. So I was just okay. raised up in music as a PK. You're, you know, helping lead worship. You're helping play mm -hmm. instruments. You're helping run the sound. You're just around all this stuff. And then in the city, there's plays, there's festivals, there's different things. So I was just automatically put into a world of music and, and arts. So the original things that I learned how to do was like set up things as far as concerts. I learned how to kind of like be a tour manager type thing. I didn't know what to call it at that time, but that's basically what I was learning to do. So as I got older and leaned further into the whole entrepreneurship journey, it just became a natural byproduct. Like, okay, artist management, because I'm creative enough to understand other creative people, but I'm also administrative enough to organize them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if we're being honest, the more creative people are usually, the less organized that they are. And that, mm -hmm. that's no shade or no diss, but it is true. Mm -hmm. And so it, it ended up being something that I could do. Like I could help you. I could make sure that certain things fell into place. And I had a lot of friends. We all were singing and playing you know, music and instruments in some capacity. So I just learned along the way and that's how it started. Wow. Okay. So you saw a need in your, well, actually you saw a space in your city that like, okay, there's enough yeah. artists to go around. Cause when you said that, I was like, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know. So, okay. Yeah. That's really interesting. I think that's cool that you leaned into a skill yeah. that you already had. You okay. saw a space and you were like, Oh, I'm there. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So, in Panama, mm -hmm. you were, you had such like a cool confidence, like as you explain how you and your team at CCMG manage and grow e-commerce stores at mm -hmm. the Mastermind Brunch with Andy, Anthony O'Neill. You remember, you were just like, yeah, so this is this. And we were all jaw dropped in the room. 
Hold on, wait. <laughs> Shook. Um, so what was it about e-commerce? So from artist yeah. management, what was it about e-commerce stores that grabbed your attention and made you want to learn more? Yeah, this is a great question because most people won't necessarily see the connection, but mm. it will make sense. Okay. So when it comes down to creative people, you're usually driven by your vision. You're driven by the ideas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But again, alluding to what we were just talking about, like sometimes the organizational thing can be a little lackluster. It's hard to have a vision without really being able to push it and execute, right? So in my mind, because I'm very much about strategy, I'm very much about not necessarily a type planner. I'm not that, but I'm very much like, okay, let's be efficient because I know this can be very simple to that saying we've all heard about starving artists. And I'm just like, why would artists be starving when they have so much creativity? Like, what is this? And I, and I just kind of saw, like, almost in a reverse engineering type of way, artists are starving because they lack execution or they lack organization. So what are some of the things that help creative people and that streams of income? And when it comes down to vision, if you can sell a product that you've imagined, you're going to make money. So to me, it was just this very natural progression, I guess I would say, like an idea that just made sense to me. And because of just our society and how things have been changing, online shopping has just become more and more normal. For me, it just became something I wanted to learn more about because I'm like, there's no way I can help people if I'm not learning about it, if I don't know the ins and outs. So let me dive into this instead of focusing so much on the artist management side, because there's a dime a dozen of people who can manage or something. But if I can really, really get into this e-commerce space and really narrow this thing down, I might really be able to help people that look like us get further along, if that makes sense. Mm, so you saw that. I, I love that you, you pointed out something. Everyone wants to be creative. It's cool. It's cute. Everyone wants to be on social media. But there is a work ethic behind that. And Absolutely. so when I was researching you, that's one of the things that you were talking about of like pretty much offering all of these back end services for entrepreneurs and creatives to be successful. And what I saw there as an entrepreneur, I was like, yeah, that is a big part that people don't see. They see the social media, your shows, your revenue. They see you, you know, with your team, your website but they don't see the everyday things that you have to do just to keep that in order. It's hard work. So um, I love that you made that connection from working directly with artists and seeing that that's something they needed and finding something that could actually help like them get to that next level or reach that next audience. So yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. From the beginning, it's always been about meeting a need. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, if, if we were going to use churchy terms, I'd be like the helps ministry person, not necessarily the hospitality person, because I don't want anything to do with serving yeah. people food. People get attitudes about food, and then I get attitudes, so that's probably not a good idea. But <laughs> using the churchy terminology, you have your helps ministry, the people that are like trying to meet those needs, and that's definitely me. Like I'm not a hospitality person. I don't want anything to do with the food. I'm going to get an attitude because people get attitude about their food, and mm -hmm. then it's just not going to be a good mix. You know, I, I just want to stay in my lane. So on the helps ministry side i'm like okay let's see what we can do to help people over here let's see what we can do to help people over here let's make okay. it as efficient as possible because what what ends up happening is when people don't have their needs met it really does trickle down into other areas and creatives deal with a lot of depression they deal with a lot of like self-accusation type things they beat themselves up they're overly critical of themselves but a lot of times if we're really being honest if money wasn't an issue life wouldn't be so bad um i'm not here i'm not trying to say that money solves everything but a lot of issues would be solved if you just had the money to pay your bills <laughs> so so it, it stands to reason that you need people that can come in to help creatives with those kind of things and that for me was just something that I just found a great passion in helping people and that's what I love to do so a business resource center of sorts a digital version of it uh, came out of that mm, I like that yeah and you did say in Panama that you are super helpful you are a resource for people I'm trying to be yeah and I'm seeing how you are turning that into revenue and impact in a community of people that I know for sure that you've helped thrive in their individual spaces. So I think that's really cool to note. Um, I think one thing that I 
grabbed, one gem that I grabbed that you said is creatives uh, deal with a lot of depression. And I've learned as a creative and as a business owner, the more organized I am, not saying that this takes it away, but I'm less likely to fall into depression or episodes of anxiety when there's a plan. I'm, I'm planning out my week. I'm taking things one by one. So it's a lot easier when you're organized to flow in your creative space. You're absolutely right. No, I agree with you. I, I, I'll i put it in a simple term just to help people kind of like see the, the picture of it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Think of a child who is just like needing that structure in order to feel safe. That's how it is for creatives, like mm -hmm. having a routine, being able to wake up, work out, eat right, keep your, your place clean, like different things that you can do to just have a routine for yourself yeah. can yeah. do so much for your self-esteem and for your confidence so that you can focus on whatever your vision is or whatever your creative art is instead of having to be torn so many ways. You're, you're hating how you look in the mirror, you don't like your weight, or you don't like your job, all of these different things that you're dissatisfied with are always like the bigger thing in, in, in what you're like complaining to yourself about. Mm -hmm. But when you can give yourself a safe place, even within your own home with the routine and things like that, it can make a world of difference. And it, it just reminds me of how children are like, they do better when they have a routine, when they have a certain bedtime, when they have certain things that they know to expect, it provides safety for them because then they're able to be more secure even as they get older because they've been given security. And it just, to me, that's the picture that makes sense. It's like, you have to give yourself some security. You have to give yourself a routine so that you don't fall apart because your gifts are a lot of times so big, we don't always know how to handle a lot of things. So we just need, we just kind of need certain things that, and it's a little di different for creatives, you know? <laughs> Girl, he's in the room. Cause you're talking, he's in the room. you're talking, you're talking, everybody, I, you know, even this series, it sounds cute. Christian creatives communicate. Okay, right. let's get what into the real. About? Yeah, what are we communicating about, right. okay? Because we got some real life issues going on, all right? We got some real talk. So you guys, this, yeah. is, this is real talk time, like for real. I, I love everything that you're saying because it hits a point that so many creatives can relate to, but it also goes back to the need of CTMG, of what you're doing, of providing that source so that we aren't falling into the same cycles. Okay, we need help. You can't do it all by yourself. You Get her cannot. services. <laughs> For real. Wait, blank period. <laughs> no, there's no, look, we're putting it on in there. Go to her, go to Miss Cookie. So <laughs> on a lighter note, um, you are the champ of lyrically correct 90s gospel version, okay? But today, Today, I have lyrically oh, correct Lord. 90s hip hop and R&B. Lord, the okay. pressure, the pressure. <laughs> she was the champ, you guys. In Panama, when I tell you she knew the harmonies and the, no, no, I even know the ad libs. Hold on, it's this. Oh, and she would know the song from the ad lib. We'd so be like, yeah. <laughs> and then I was the youngest one on the trip, so I didn't know any of the, the early 90s guys. I was like, what God on Lord it? <laughs> Charge it to your head, not your heart. Charge it to your head, not your heart. <laughs> oh my goodness. So today I had to help her bring her down to my generation. Because this is a little more relatable now. Now listen, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how this is gonna go because listen, I've been running for Jesus a long time. Hey. I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go. She sis. said, I've been running for Jesus. Come on. She said, I have been on the wall. <laughs> Okay, I, I, they should be pretty easy. I tried to pick a well-known song. So I have three cards here. I'm going to close my eyes and just pick one. Okay. So if you really want to party with Buster Rhymes, what must he see? If you really want to party with me, let me see just what you got for me. Why? Okay. <laughs> see? Tell me I've been ready for Jesus. The whole song, she just sung the whole song with the beat. If you, with the staccato, talk about I now. It's a little bit. It's a little bit of a killer in the beat. You got to get a little rhythm, and it helps you lock it in. So you won that card because of a killer in the beat. Shout out to Kiki Palmer, Shout sister Kiki. To 
evangelist Kiki Palmer <laughs> has helped Minister Cookie today. Yes. <laughs> So thankful. Oh, so we are so thankful for Mr. Kiki. I love it. I can't. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that was my surprise for this episode. I, I was like, it. I'ma just. I was like, cause I was thinking of a question, and God was just like, have fun with this one. Like, have yeah. fun. With, and I was like, what is that? Listen. And then I looked and I was like, I bought these cards right after the trip. We're doing this. Okay. I love it. No, that's that's definitely something that I'm like super, super conscious about. I can't go from being super deep in one moment to entirely <laughs> silly the next. And right, I'm right. okay with it. <laughs> totally okay. Okay, because we're here. We're free over here. We over fine. here in freedom. In freedom. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but last but not least, so... CCMG offers branding, websites, social media strategy and management tools, Facebook ad campaigns, business consulting, business loans and funding, business credit repair tools, and much more, okay? So those are just a few of the services that you offer. Explain why entrepreneurs can't do business alone and why it's so important to focus on the back end of your business, even though we kind of already talked about that. Sure, sure. So to answer the first part of your question, as far as doing things alone, I'm really not sure why we think that doing things alone is good, because there's so much that you can accomplish when you're doing it amongst others in a sense of like synergy and mm -hmm. and strengths and weaknesses kind of covering each other. Um, if we're being like super spiritual and deep, I guess you could say, you know, the Bible says two is better than than one and there's so much more that you can do in that regard but even even outside of that if you were just trying to you know go further in your business if you can do this much like like just this much you can do that what if you found people that can come alongside of you and bring what they can do as well now you can do this much it's very simple to me but I do understand that for others it can be difficult to let go because we can be control freaks especially creatives yeah. it's like we want things to be the way that we envisioned it because if we don't push the vision that we have someone else can either steal it or or try to change it and it will no longer be our original vision and i get that but that's an entirely different problem that we're focusing on <laughs> like right. don't don't recreate an issue that hasn't even happened yet right we're just talking about having a team meaning people that are there to back you up, that are there to cover your weaknesses with their strengths and add to what it is that you cannot do because they can do it. So if you have a product that you want to sell, you'd be better off probably running some ads, just as an example. Well, chances are you don't just innately know how to run ads, and instead of fumbling around wasting your own money trying to figure that out because it's a very, you know, lengthy process to learn to do those things especially when tools and different ways to do it are changing mm -hmm. you can hire a team and say hey i really would like to work with you guys what can you do to help me push this product and the next thing you know you have a whole team that already knows how to run ads and then they're helping you do more with your product exactly. i mean it just it doesn't have to be challenging but people do need a, a, a lot of encouragement because our mindset has just been to not trust or it's just been to be self-made and, and do it ourselves and feel like we've gotten further because we did it ourselves. And that's not always wise because you'll burn yourself out, you'll spin your wheels and you'll waste your money because you've spent so much time trying to do it yourself without yeah. knowing what you're doing. And then we think because we've gone to YouTube University that we just know everything, child. My goodness, YouTube University got yeah. us feeling ourselves. <laughs> right, you guys. You said a mouthful there because there's power in community. There's so sure. much power in community. I remember as a creative, like you were saying, I got to a point where I was like, well, I feel like I'm doing everything I need to do, but I'm not seeing the results. And I kept asking God, and he was like, girl, the reason why I have been putting community on your heart all year is because that's what you're going to need for the next level. You can't figure this out on your own. So immediately, I got a business coach. I got... Because, and then I went on the Panama trip because I had to understand, okay, if I can't do it alone, yeah. I may not know who I'm supposed to do it with, but I need to get around some people that can inspire me, that can sharpen iron, that can hold me accountable and give me some fresh ideas. 
And yeah. yes, it's it's been much easier, honestly, to do business. I've been much more profitable <laughs> since as well. Yes. Since I've been collaborating and asking for help and not and saying, hey, I don't have to do it alone. This is each other. Yeah, I, I, I want to point this out too because you just brought this up without saying it, but mm. there's like this fear that we have of competition. And that's sometimes what it boils down to. It's like, yeah. oh, I don't want to share too much with people because what if they take what I have or what if they steal what it is that I'm trying to do? And trust me, I totally get that. But that's a different problem. We're not talking about that. We're talking about finding people that there is some synergy with where there's like that cohesion of, oh, wow, they get me. And I think that there's something here and working together in order to make what you do even better. Because like you said, when you have that, you become more profitable. You're you're less in your head about things because Mm -hmm. you're not just your own you know, business meeting. It's just you and whatever other personalities you have in there talking to each other. Like, that's not a business meeting, guys. I'm so sorry. That's a struggle meeting. That's a struggle meeting. I'm so very sorry, but that is not a business meeting. You yeah. yourself and I, okay? But we've gotten used to doing things that way. We really have because nobody has corrected us or we're not open to the correction. Mm-hmm. And we're just trying to make stuff happen on our own but then you end up getting burnt out and then you're struggling with depression and you're struggling with low self-esteem because you're not profitable and things aren't going as planned i mean there's just so much right yeah but that also goes into the second part of your question just in regards to like why it's so important to even build up the foundation of things like the back end of things really matters because if you don't have those initial things in place when you do start to grow and when you do start to expand things can really fall apart and i know by experience because i have had things happen that i was not prepared for and i thought i was prepared but then it happens and you're like oh okay guess not okay let's you yeah. know go back to drawing board let's yeah. try and redo you know mm-hmm. and that's okay i mean it's all going to be a learning process but it's still a matter of like doing the absolute level best that you can do to make sure that your business has a fighting chance. It's not about the competition. You go into Target, how many people are selling the same thing? It's a bunch of soaps all on the same shelves. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of hair products. They're all in the same section. It's not about the competition, beloved. (laughs) It's not about that. It's about doing things efficiently efficient as possible and Mm -hmm. in excellence and you can't do that without a team and you can't do that without making sure that that foundation is like stable so you have something to scale and grow and be profitable with you know that's so awesome i i I listen like everything you you tied the entire interview perfectly and so nicely together it is necessary it's, and you can't just go on YouTube, even though you should watch this whole series on YouTube. Oh, it's but, definitely helpful. It'll take you to a place. It'll take you and, there. And you'll reach the end of yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I think so many, we, you know, <laughs> I was watching, um, oh gosh, what is her name? It was a comedian on HBO. I don't know why I can't, but she's Molly on Insecure. I can't remember. Oh, her name. Uh, Yvonne Orgy. Yvonne, yes. And I was watching her okay. recent <laughs> HBO show. And her stand up, and she was like, "We even live in a world that encourages this amount of stress and like this grinding all my life, grinding all." <laughs> and she did the you ran, into, you ran into the ground. Ciao. Ran into the ground, and I think entrepreneurs feel like that's this badge of honor because I do it by myself. And then we have the Issa Rae speech that's hilarious, like entrepreneur memes. I do this by myself, but really, most successful entrepreneurs, as you get to a certain level. You need an assistant, you need a team, you need a, you know, an accountant, a CPA or a lawyer, um, a digital marketer. You need a mentor or a few, you know, so eventually as you want to go up, expect for God to bring people in your life and they may not be people you expect and they may not be people who you've ever met. So, yeah, it's true. Like if you wanted to buy a car outside of business, just for personal use, you have to go to a place in order to buy a car. And there's going to be different people in different roles to help you through that process. Mm -hmm. So in a business, if you want to buy a property and say, oh, I'm a landlord and I own a property, 
there's other people involved in that process. There's an attorney, there is a listing agent. I mean, there's just a lot that's involved. It's not ever going to just be you. And I don't know if sometimes we just want the the credit and we just like want to feel like we've accomplished things a little bit. But I think that ties into a little bit of low self-esteem more than anything, because now you're looking for like, you know, some accolades or something like you want to hear you the man or you the woman or something instead of just understanding that we can do more together. And so as far as Cookie Truth Media Group is concerned, I wanted a a safe place where people can say, hey, this is what I'm I'm wanting to build or this is what direction I want to go. Um, you know, what can we do? How can we get there? And then we just help map things out. We'll point you in the right direction, get you to the team that's needed for whatever that is. And just be that resource center that says, hey, here, you know, the problem was this and here's the solution. Boom, there you go. And to me, that is helping people. That's meeting the need and that's helping people be profitable as well because you're help taking them from one place to their next. Come on. And that is Miss Cookie Robinson, you guys. <laughs> It was such a pleasure to have you today. If you didn't get the gems dropped, you missed out. This was such a needed conversation because it goes against popular culture. It goes against what you're seeing on social media, but it's real. You have someone right here. She's been through it. She's doing it. And you also have someone else who is in the very beginning stages of that journey as well of learning and processing and building um, and growing. So we are both agreeing on some things, you guys, in two completely different parts of the the journey, but some things are still the same. So I hope you listened. I hope you enjoyed. This has been SED Interviews, where Christian creatives communicate, and I'm your host, Leona Howard. Bye, Shake Fam. See you guys. Bye.